also want to acknowledge the the trees, the four-legged ones, the winged ones, the fish nations, all the different beings that are with us outside here. You can hear the birds in the morning. It was really nice to hear all the different birds. Um, so I'm going to try to go through a couple of pictures really quickly to give you an idea of where I'm from, and then tomorrow we'll go into a little bit more in-depth stuff. But um, So just to give you an idea, I'm from northern Alberta, which is for north, north of Montana. So this is my cookum. So my grandmother, we say cookum. And uh, this is before she passed away, and that's my dad, who was actually hidden from the Indian agent that would come and take all the children from the communities. My Kukum and my Musa, my grandfather, um, they they hid him in the bush because they were they just he was raised on the land. Um, so my dad didn't actually speak English until um, they they finally took him to a day school when he was about ten. And so we're from the Boreal, which is the northern lungs of Mother Earth, and so that's what we've been fighting to protect. Um, so you can see I was born in the the left blotch where the Peace River is, and our community is about uh, 90 minute, 90 kilometers, I don't know how many miles, 45 miles, um, from there. And this is the tar sands, which we've been trying to stop um, the expansion of. Um, for our traditional territory, um, there's oil, gas, logging, fracking, conventional, um, unconventional oil. And so that's where my family lives in that. We call it in our traditional territory the teardrop. And a lot of the land's been leased. Um, there's you know, over 2,600 2, oil and gas wells and 1,400 kilometers of just tar sands in our territory. So we're kind of a macrocosm of the microcosm of many other communities in and around the area. Um, they've also talked about nuclear. Um, and since 1978, it's been calculated that billions of dollars have been taken out of our territory in this type of revenue from the oil and gas. But my family has no running water still. We don't have paved roads, no infrastructure. My dad's the chief now, so he's actually been bringing water into the community, but through septic tanks, through new housing. And that, oh, that's my dad up there by the teeth, by our teepee. Um, so yeah, we're, you know, in, we have mines in the east side of the tar sands in the eastern part of the province. Um, as you can see, the biggest dump trucks in the world, um, three stories high. We took this from the air. And then we have the underground mining, kind of like fracking too. Um, and so, that has a pretty big footprint because it's 80% of the way they're actually going to extract tar sands. Um, and the reason why it's such a big issue because for water, um, it, this is the biggest in, one of the biggest inland delta systems in the world, and it's a sixth of Canada's fresh water supply, and it's being severely we're we're, we're in de drought as well. Um, we've had forest fires out of control earlier earlier in the season for year you know every year um, for the past at least five years. And, you know, we're, there, the tar sands and other industry are draining the glaciers um, because they get to use this water, pristine water, pristine drinking water to make, make oil and fracking. Um, so you can see how it's just receding and receding. And we use, a, they're use a, utilizing three to five barrels of water for one barrel of oil. Um, and then a lot of the fishing communities um, are finding tumors because of the toxicity, um, the byproduct. So we have fishermen. This is from Fort Chippewan, another um, Dene community. And this is the type of, see, this is this is from the air. We can see it looks like an oil spill, but this is just actually the toxicity they flush onto the land called in tailing ponds. You can actually see these tailing ponds from space because they're producing it every day right now, every day. Um, and it produces, each barrel produces 1.5 barrels of toxicity. Um, so you can see the fish. This is taken from a doctor, Schindler, who, who's been researching water for 30 years at the University of Alberta. And, um, yeah, just, I'll talk more about this tomorrow, but the, you know, the Boreal, like I said, it's the, it's the northern lungs of Mother Earth, and they're, and we're now, Canada's now number one in deforestation because of it, because of the tar sands, because they're just basically to get at the tar sands, um, because it's so deep down, you have to basically, Either completely de deforest the land and or um, suck it, suck it, suck up, suck it up, like um, superheat the steam and push it down and then suck it up. Um, so we're talking about, you know, for an area that's bigger than England and Wales or for the state of Florida, we're talking about destroying that if they actually continue to produce tar sands. And we're seeing animals extirpated. And this is the oil spill that Maureen was talking about back home. Um, so it was talking about trauma tomorrow. <laughs> something that I'm still healing from because seeing your family being poisoned is the worst thing. These are my cousin's kids. Um, and I'll just end with this.
and I won't go too much into it, but I'll talk a bit more about it tomorrow, because we have thousands and thousands of indigenous women missing and murdered in Canada, and my sister's one of them, and it's, it's a really traumatic thing to experience, and it's something I'm still healing from. So, thank you.